This is Shelton R Benjamin. This is Harley Race. This is Mick Foley. This is Mr. Wonderful Paul Orndorff. This is the Monster of Business. This is Daniel Bryan. This is JBL, and you're watching the MWF. Be there live. Wrestling fans from around the corner and around the world, welcome to another installment of Wrestling Insiders. I'm Dan Marotti. Tonight we're going to take a look at TNA's Wednesday night debut on Destination America, moving over from Friday. That was June the 3rd, 2015, as the proverbial Wednesday night wars began. Before we get going, fans would love for you to take advantage of the special offers we have, help us pay the bills, and keep us producing free content for you to enjoy on any online platform anywhere in the world that really makes a difference check this out between now and this sunday night june the 14th we have a huge money in the bank mega raffle over at bostonwrestling.com where you can win 50 huge prizes from wwe and nxt we're talking about a money in the bank pay-per-view chair autographed 11 by 14s of john cena dean ambrose rob van dam even finn Balor. check out how awesome that is on boston wrestling we got autographed 8x10 promo photos, a library of 20 brand new books. We've got DVDs. We've got lots more, tons of unique wrestling items for your collection. One winner gets the entire jackpot, all 50 prizes. The Mega Raffle is open to any fan in the world. The raffle tickets start at just $5. Your raffle ticket numbers are emailed to you, so you have them in hand. The winning ticket will be drawn after Money in the Bank Sunday night, and then you can pick up your prizes at MWF Studios or arrange to have them shipped. You're talking about thousands of dollars worth of prizes, and every single dollar raised goes into our live event initiatives and producing more and more great video content for you to enjoy absolutely free. Also learn that WWE Network is available free in the month of June to new subscribers. That includes Money in the Bank Sunday night. You can also check out the Stone Cold Steve Austin podcast with Paul Heyman that took place after Raw last week on demand. You also have access to big events recently such as Elimination Chamber, Payback, and NXT TakeOver Unstoppable. Click the link below on our YouTube page. Start enjoying the WWE Network now. Also, don't forget that you can help Boston Wrestling by using our special links for both Amazon.com and WWEShop.com. No matter what you buy, even non-wrestling merchandise on Amazon, we get a small percentage of your purchase, and it doesn't increase your costs one single cent. We bring you tons of free content, and we need some help to keep the train rolling. If you don't feel like shopping, hey, we have a PayPal account. You can donate a dollar, you can donate two dollars, you can donate a thousand. Using the email address, bw at bostonwrestling.com of any denomination, we'd be happy to send you a shout-out of any kind. We also have a great online campaign coming this summer that I'm really excited about to raise some funds for what we're trying to do. We'd also be happy if you joined us by subscribing for free to our YouTube channel. We're starting to close in on 800 free videos for your viewing pleasure. If you enjoy what you see, share it with your wrestling friends and make sure you click the like button so YouTube showcases a giant library to more and more of your fellow wrestling fans. TNA has made the move to Wednesday night. It kicked off the show in the new time slot with a barbershop style group singing Ethan Carter the third to the ring. I thought that was stupid. It'd make me want to change the channel. But I thought it was great. In the broadcast booth, Josh Matthews was joined by the returning Pope, D'Angelo De Niro, also known as Elijah Burke in WWE. I have no idea why such a great talent hasn't been featured on national television over the past few years. He's got a great look. He's great in the ring, a tremendous athlete. He's got great charisma, great personality, a great promo. I don't know how WWE failed so bad when he was with the company in the ECW brand back in the mid-2000s, and I don't know why he vanished from TNA, but I'm glad he's back because the pulp adds value to TNA, and that's what you need in this stage of the game in 2015. 
Speaking of people that WWE missed the boat on, what about Ethan Carter the Third? He's turned into a tremendous character in TNA. I really have become a big fan of his over the past year or so since he's been with the company. Ethan Carter was officially the number one contender in his mind, but then Kurt Angle came out and reminded him of Destination X next week. That show allows the X Division champion the opportunity to surrender his title to face the champion. And in this case, it's Rockstar Spud. Please. I mean, he was fine in his role as Dixie Carter's little sidekick, but to be challenging Kurt Angle as some kind of a legitimate threat to the TNA World Heavyweight Championship. I, I roll my eyes. In the opening contest, Bobby Lashley defeated Eric Young with a spear. You know how much I love Bobby Lashley. Real deal athlete, as bad as they come. Kick-ass wrestler. Mixed martial artist superstar. Man can do it all. He's also a good human being. Bobby's a good friend. Match was fine. I still don't buy Eric Young as a dangerous heel threat after it was a decade of nonsense with him running around Universal Studios with Shock Boy and ODB and a lot of the other nonsense he was involved in. Just my opinion, I'm sure some fans enjoy Young in this latest role for him. Chris Melendez charged the ring after the match looking for revenge, but Young retreated to the back. In the back, it was Taryn Terrell in the dollhouse. I mean, you talk about complete and utter nonsense and garbage. This was atrocious. Taryn Terrell was featured as an outstanding, beautiful female athlete. I'm a big fan of Taryn's, but for her to go from that to acting like a five-year-old girl with these other two, I, I have no idea how TNA feels that's going to sell them tickets, pay-per-views, merchandise, ratings. It's an insult to someone's intelligence, and I don't know why someone would want to watch it beyond Taryn's beauty. It was stupid, ridiculous. I don't know why TNA in the position they're in would want to put on a segment that'll turn folks off. In the ring, Brooke defeated Jade. This match was so bad that it made Nikki Bella look like Brock Lesnar at Elimination Chamber a few nights before. I mean, again, what are they thinking? In the back, there was a show-long theme of Rockstar Spud deciding if he should give up his X Division title to face Kurt Angle. Again, is any fan going to take that seriously? I know I'm not. It's not fun. It's not funny. In the ring here, we had a good matchup. The Rising defeated the Beatdown Clan. Could have used more time, but it was real good when Drew Galloway and Loki were in the ring. Loki is an unsung hero of TNA. He's one of the best professional wrestlers in the world, and he stands out even more when you have a show filled with nonsense like this one. Uh, the Rising needs a lot more grooming to be taken seriously beyond Galloway. I like the BDC faction. It's really a shame TNA wasn't able to put together a deal to hold on to Samoa Joe. I think Homicide will be excellent once he's healthy with that trio. Uh, Spud finally came out to make his announcement on what he was going to do in regards to keeping or giving up the X Division title. Nobody cared. Angle came down and ran down his personal resume. Then Ethan Carter came down and said his aunt offered Spud a lifetime deal as chief of staff. In the end, he decided to cash in that X Division gold, and that'll be your main event next Wednesday night on Destination America. Another matchup I really like, the Dirty Heels with the win over the Wolves in the third of their Best of Seven series for the held-up TNA Tag Team Championship. Really get into this match, great stuff, tons of false finishes. For the actual finish, Bobby Roode teased that he was going to refuse to hit Eddie Edwards with a steel chair. Then when the ref's back was turned, he nailed him with it. This is the type of wrestling I enjoy. This is the type of wrestling TNA needs to present to continue to capture retain and increase the audience now. Then you had the series of vignettes with Mickey James in Nashville. She thought she was apparently going to meet with music executives, but it wound up being her friend James Storm saying she should be a star in Nashville. This coming from a man that was just leading a cult. He wanted her to join his revolution, that she was bigger than music, and this was just awful. Mickey James was upset that Storm would try to fool her. She's engaged. She has a son. And the two left together as friends. Later, when they were walking through Nashville, not one but two surveillance cameras spotted Storm bumping her onto the train tracks, and it was made to look like she was hit by a train. Are you serious? Madison Rain had a few things to address in the ring, and nobody cared. She was angry that Velvet Sky was able to walk into the ring as a fan, and nobody tried to stop her when she returned recently. Madison Rain slapped Sky across the face, then Velvet hit her stunner. Angelina Love came out with security guards saying that Sky doesn't work there anymore. She ordered these security guards to arrest her, even though they weren't cops. 
Velvet attempted to beat the four guys up when they were trying to handcuff her, and Love said she was arrested and going to jail. In what stratosphere is this something any professional wrestling fan would want to watch or invest 10 cents of their money in? And it got worse. More security guards came out only to arrest Angelina Love because she assaulted a quote-unquote fan since Velvet Sky doesn't work there. Wow. Main event, Kurt Angle and Rockstar Spud defeated Tyrus and Ethan Carter III. The heels tossed Spud around for most of the match. Angle got the hot tag and clean house at the Angle Slam on Tyrus, and Spud jumped on top of him for the pinfall. Austin Aries came out and announced that Destination X, he's going to cash in his pretend money in the bank briefcase and challenge the winner of Angle versus Spud. I think that TNA even using a briefcase in this capacity is a joke, but I like the fact that they're actually announcing a match instead of in WWE, where the winner of the briefcase usually just runs in at the end of a matchup. Very disappointing outing from TNA in their Wednesday debut. They had the benefit of a much stronger lead-in from Ring of Honor Wrestling at 8 p.m., as opposed to the show where the Hillbillies from West Virginia hunt Bigfoot every week. The tag team best of seven match was really good. Angle was fine as he continued his build for his program with Ethan Carter III, but half of this program insulted my intelligence, and I don't want to spend my time having my intelligence insulted when I'm watching TV. I can only imagine what the average fan at home thought through their mind when TNA was pushing Slammiversary on pay-per-view June the 28th. Fans, those are just my individual thoughts. I'm sure a lot of folks enjoyed TNA as it was this week. I just didn't happen to be one of them. I'm very anxious to share my opinions on both Ring of Honor and NXT from the Wednesday Night War. And I look forward to see what TNA's efforts will be next Wednesday night at 9 p.m. on Destination America. Running out of time here. Until we speak again, hope you and yours be well.